This is my Phantom FPV wing that I've recently been flying with the APM 2.6. And this is the airspeed sensor kit that you can buy from 3D Robotics. I think I got it for about $27. And in this video, I'm going to show how to set up your APM with the airspeed sensor. And the kit comes with about a foot of rubber tubing, the airspeed sensor, a pitot tube that measures both the static and dynamic air pressure, servo cable and some header pins that you solder to the sensor and then connect to APM with the cable. Now you may be wondering why you would actually need this airspeed sensor and so let me just cut to a quick clip of my penguin in the air with the APM 2.6 and no airspeed sensor. And I was flying at about 300 feet with a pretty strong headwind of about 20 miles an hour and you'll see that the plane just hovers and actually uh, it sat there for quite a while and the wind pushed it backwards. If you look up, right there, headwinds are pretty bad today. So it's essentially just hovering like a multi-rotor, trying to make its way into the wind but uh, not making any progress. It's been sitting in that spot for about three minutes. So I'll just have to take control and bring it down. I want to demonstrate how to set that airspeed sensor up with my phantom wing. And what we actually want is this pitot tube to stick about two centimeters so these side holes are accessible outside of the nose of this plane. I'm going to use my handy styrofoam cutter. This is something that I got off of eBay, I believe is about $20 at the time. But you just plug it up to power, turn it on, and then we'll go ahead and make that hole. Okay, so our cutter is nice and heated up. Now, the trick is to just go nice and slow during any cut you make. And if you're going to cut, like, let's say a hole or along a path, then the best thing you can do is just slowly move up and down like you're using a knife. Just straight through in here in a second. You, we should see it come out. So you got a nice hole. Kind of move it around and widen that a little bit. Okay, now that our hole is made, I'll go ahead and just... Press that pitot tube straight through and we should see it. There we go, come out. Now it's important to make sure that you have a little bit of clearance beyond the edge of the plane or the nose of the plane with these side holes. So they recommend about a centimeter. And you can see that tube is just about the perfect length for this phantom wing. So that split happens right there and that's all the way up against the edge of this nose. Okay, next we'll take this rubber tubing that comes with the kit. It's about a foot long. I'll just cut it into six inch pieces. You'll obviously want to modify that for the length that's appropriate for your setup. We'll go ahead and connect these rubber tubes to each one of these bars coming off this tube. Now here in a minute when we hook up the airspeed sensor, it's really important to know which one of these lines to run to which port on the sensor. So next we'll solder these header pins. The, the one supplied are actually 90 degree angle and you can see analog, five volts and ground. Okay, we have our header pins soldered on. Now here's the key with this setup. So you have the straight tube coming out of the back of the pitot tube and what you want to do is run that into the top port on the airspeed sensor. Top port is now connected and now this other tube that's coming off the at an angle actually comes up and gets connected to the bottom port. Now our bottom port is connected. Connect our servo cable so we have analog, 5 volts and ground. Now our airspeed sensor is hooked up mounted inside the plane connected to the A0 port on the APM. So let's go ahead and look at the mission planner setup to start getting readings from our airspeed sensor. Now we're connected to mission planner. We're going to go to initial setup, optional hardware, and then select airspeed. For the airspeed configuration we want to go ahead and enable the sensor. We definitely want to use airspeed and that means that this will be used in the calculations uh, when flying autonomously and by default this will be selected APM to analog pin 0 which is where we have our sensor connected. So as we click those values those get sent to the board 
Now looking at the flight data screen and that default value is close to 13 meters per second. Now we know that's not accurate. So this took me a little while to figure out when I did my first setup and I want to show you what you need to do next. So on your flight data screen you want to go down to the actions tab and then do a pre-flight calibration. So we'll select that. We'll click do action. It'll ask us to confirm so we'll click yes and it'll do that calibration. And now you can see the airspeed value has come down still roughly uh, three meters per second and it says in the manual that that's relatively okay. And what we can do to get this value even more accurate is a automatic calibration. And I'll cover that in a future video, but it basically consists of taking your plane up, loitering for about five minutes, and then setting some configuration parameters. But that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and blow on this pitot tube and we'll see this airspeed value change, which shows us that the sensor is actually working. And you saw those values get up to almost 20 meters per second. So our airspeed sensor is working properly. And here you can see it with the canopy on, our pitot tube sticking out the front. So just wanted to share that setup with you guys. Something I've done before, but found it a little bit cumbersome to get through all the documentation to get it set up properly. So that's how you configure it. And in an upcoming video, I'll definitely show a field calibration with this guy in the air. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. And until next time, thanks for watching.